also just good to bring all the community of musicians, basses together, you know, and, and, and communicating with each other, knowing each other. And, um, and you get to see all the shades and degradations and of uh, how people operate. It's great in these current times to see people doing something meaningful to try to bring peace and joy and connection. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabass Conversations. And we're talking today with Mark Dresser and William Parker about Deep Tones for Peace 2020, which is happening right now. It's a very cool project. Let me just describe it to you from their Facebook group. That's where this is all taking place. So let me just read the description so you get an idea if you don't know. Deep Tones for Peace 2020 is a regular streaming of live meditations for peace, healing, and transformation. Musicians transmitting deep tones to counterbalance the many systemic injustices woven into the fabric of our society. Deep tones can strengthen the unseen bonds of our diversity as we oppose economic, educational, and environmental inequities fueled by racism, sexism, and greed. The idea is to play your bass for 5 to 30 minutes with the intent of musically sending healing vibrations to be felt worldwide. Participation is open to all bassists who wish to join in an ongoing musical transmission of vibrations for peace any style or form of music in any level bass player can generate deep tones for peace the main requirement is the intent and desire to create peace in the world we truly believe this project will have a positive impact on the balance of life so we have everything you need linked up there along with the email address that you can send if you want to perform it. And let's get into this conversation with Mark Dresser and William Parker about the backstory, how this project has taken shape and what they see for the future. I've been following along with the various performances uh, through Facebook, the Deep Tones for Peace that's that's been coming out. I remember, uh, was it 2009 that the CD DVD happened? Well, that was the 2009 was when we first did Deep Tones for Peace, which was a telematic concert between uh, Jerusalem and New York. And as we were planning that, William and I started an initiative called Deep Tones for Peace Live, which which basically bass players could make live peace transmissions via uh, uh, an application called Ustream.tv. And um, that became sort of the model for uh, what we're doing now. So, but in 2009, this we had this telematic concert for. At the time, the fo- the focus was, you know, for peace in the Middle East, and so uh, we had uh, like 13 bass players in New York. I think we had um, Rufus Reed, Henry Grimes, uh, David Phillips, Lindsey Horner, Trevor Dunn, and in uh, Jerusalem we had Bert Turetsky, Bar Phillips, uh, J.C. Jones. Uh, we had um, Chichi Nwanaku, Arena Kalina Gudava, um, myself. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone, but I, I, I that's I, th- I think I got. Oh, Michael Klinghoffer also. Yeah, I was just going through. You've got at least some of that up on YouTube in some capacity. I was just going through and watching through and seeing some of some of the various performers you described. So I'll make sure to link up so people can see that. Uh, Great. That, yeah. And Sarah Weaver. Sarah Weaver was conducting in New York. She was, you know, she uh, she has been a partner in the telematic stuff from for with me since 2007. Mm-hmm. She was Pauline Oliveira's assistant when we did our first Telematica class class together, and then we've been collaborating on these, uh, you know, um, artistic projects, but also these, you know, socially motivated projects. We've done uh, Deep Tones for Peace was the very first peace-related project we did. We did we've done other concerts that uh, were resonations that were had to do with actually happened in one location at United Nations headquarters in New York and we connected with as many as five different sites mm-hmm. but it, but you know when the pandemic happened uh, you know I, I contacted William because I just felt like man it's you know it's time we, you know would you be interested in doing this again and uh, you know and uh, I 
he responded immediately and extremely positively. So that's that sort of motivated us to to put this up. Very cool. And and William, you were involved in the the first time around. You and Mark kind of co-founded this, right? Back before the the fir, before the 2009 concert. Well, I don't know if, if I if I co-founded it, but I was there, and it's you know one of the people you know J.C. Jones and Bar Phillips, and uh, and myself was were was there when it began to 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 jump off. I wasn't at the concert in um, Jerusalem or New York. I was in Portugal at the That's time. That's right. Right? Lisbon opening invocation, reading there from Lisbon uh, in between my sound check and, uh, but it was times to, I mean, it was very important back then, you know, when, uh, and uh, healing, um, I'm, that's, I'm right there. Because I think that's, that's what the music, whatever, that's what this music is about that, that we're playing. So if you're listening, you know, you're not feeling well and somebody puts your favorite pop tune on, you start feeling good. And mm-hmm. you start feeling better. So it's like, and, and that's sort of like peripheral here healing. So if you actually concentrating on, you know, in a, in a sense like a shamanistic type idea of music and uh, what you're playing and why you're playing it, it can be a little more focused. So, so I think that um, it's just good. And also it's just good to bring all the community of musicians, bassists, together you know and 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 communicating with each other knowing each other and um and you get to see all the shades and degradations and of how people operate i mean some people want to play one note one sound some people don't even want to use the term note they want to use the term sound some people want to play pit some people want to both and some people you know, want to like add strings to their bass. What's the guy in St. Louis that add, that put the the the, the uh, sarangi? The, oh, you talking about Mark Deutsch? Mark, Mark Deutsch, yeah. Yeah, he's. I think he's performing on Sunday. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so he was he was in New York years ago, and uh, from St. Louis, and uh, and he right. put these sympathetic strings on his bass. Or oh, Paul Rogers. I forgot about Paul Rogers. Yeah, he's he also had that bass bass made. And every day when we're talking about bass players, there's always somebody I just remember. I forgot about. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> okay. How how did you two first uh, get to know each other? When did you first uh, encounter each other? I met William in 1975, which was the year I moved first moved to New York, and. Um, and you know, as we were bass players playing in the same scene, we would interact, and uh, and uh, you know, I I remember um, at what we had I'd gone over his place and we had played, and then then at one point, um, you know, and as you as you well know, and as our bass community knows, bass players are pretty open and friendly to one another by you know as a general rule and but William really actually saved me in a significant way I'd moved back I took a two I took a two week vacation returning back to California and I came back to find that my apartment I had to move out of it I had I had 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 a free sublet no I had a not a free sublet but I had a I was subletting an apartment and the guy who led it to me was moving back in all of a sudden and and William was a super of a building, and he said, "Well, man, I think someone's moving out. You can stay at our. You can stay at this apartment." So he, you know, he really, <laughs> really, he and uh, Patricia really saved us at that time, and so we had a place to live. Otherwise, I might have been homeless. So I, I uh, you know, Williams had a special uh, space in my heart ever since. <laughs> That's great. Wow. <laughs> and then I remember um then now you tell me if I'm wrong, Mark. Okay. Uh now then Mark after, you know, things he left New York. Now did you go to Italy? 
I did go to Italy a few years later, about uh, in 1983. So that was eight years later, I guess. To study electronic music? No, I went there to study with uh, the uh, great bass player Franco Petracchi. Okay, okay. We didn't know. We just said, well, what happened to Mark? He said, oh, he went to Italy to study the electronic music. <laughs> yeah, and then, and that's where, and then, you know, I got the call to play with Braxton, and that was sort of the, that was this cue to say, maybe it's time to come back to America. Right, right, right. And right. then uh, a couple of years later, and I moved to New York, and, and yeah, so, you know, you you rarely see bass players at gigs because they're they're doing their own gigs. Right. But we, every time we've had the opportunity to to hang out, we we enjoy it. That's so it's uh, and when the you know when uh, the original Deep Tones for Peace happened, you know I called William to invite him to do it, but he mentioned that he had a a gig in Portugal or was going to be away in Portugal during the time of our proposed uh, concert in April and so uh, we invited him and so then we came up with the idea well what else could we do in this Deep Tones for Peace Now idea came about which again really is the blueprint for this project that we're doing right now on a, a Facebook page and you know we've been uh, transmitting daily and sometimes two a day. Now there's almost always two transmissions a day from, we've had over 40 bass players since uh, August 1st, it's August 28th now. And, you know, and then we, then we have a, you know, in a short, less than a month, we have over 1,200 people from over 20 countries who are checking it out. And it's been uh, wonderfully affirming that, uh, people feel resonance with the set the sentiment no it's a beautiful thing and what talk about that's it's so you've been doing up to two a day that's remarkable yes. wow yeah that's the, yeah I, I mean we have you know we have this wonderful team we couldn't do it ourselves so uh, fumiko wellington is doing all the administration of the scheduling and uh kyle modal uh who's a wonderful bass player in his own right and uh is doing handling the technology uh and then uh will yeager another fine bass player is handling a lot of the facebook stuff so uh you know and every you know we meet together weekly and figure out what the next step is as we learn as we go so obviously people listening should check it out and i'll link up to that yeah. you can find it i've watched uh several i, I it seemed like a lot. i didn't realize it was two a day but i guess that makes sense because i was thinking wow look at all this um and then maybe some people listening if they want to get involved it's open to any bass player. It's any age, any style, any level. It's really the intent to project peace in, you know, opposition to all the nonsense that is going on in the world, you know? And it's just, you know, and uh, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's really a, an, act of, an act of intention. Which is so important, well, any time, but especially at this moment where people are thinking like, what what can we do? We creative artists, performers, uh, and so it's really it's really cool to see that uh, you two brought this brought this back or relaunched or whatever phrase you want to use, and that's that's remarkable. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. Uh, I think, and and it's sort of even like now self it's like a wheel going down a a, a a hill it's 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 a lot of kinetic energy happening with it what do you see this project looking like uh, you you think you're going to keep the schedule going do you have any sort of seminal uh of event or some have you thought how far ahead have you thought i guess in terms of what this what this is going to look like going forward well right now um we're booked through September. Uh, our intention is to go through the election and hopefully into the new year. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, uh, when we get to new year, we'll we'll reevaluate. But like, we're trying to develop the kinds of projects that we're doing on it. So right now it's solo transmissions. We're hoping that we're going to be able to bring telematics into Facebook. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we have a special project uh, that that we're planning to do on 9-11 that, that uh, William wrote a, uh, a very direct piece that uh, he and I will play together. And we're inviting everyone to participate in this piece, to play with us, with this intention. And this is, you know, in, in memoriam of, uh, of 9-11. I mean, you may want, you want to add to that, William? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's something that all the bass players who if they desire to, to, to play along and uh, add their own voice to the, uh, the composition, if not s sonically, that, but vibrationally, and, and perhaps sonically too, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, they'll be able to hear us and see us, but we won't be able to uh, hear and see them as yet, unless between now and then we hook up some very <laughs> hip technology that'll allow that. But uh, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's the beginning. You know, I think it's it's funny how like the, the social moment is, you know, as we talked about earlier with Michael Dessen, is that, you know, it because we're in a pandemic, it's really motivated a lot of people to get busy to try to figure out new new ways of co human connectivity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just heard today uh, that, you know, that Jack Trip, that, you know, they have a new s platform that can get up to as many as 500 people to play together, which, wow. I mean, the, you know, as with all technology, the promise and and when the p uh, reality actually pans out, can, there can be some distance with that. But people are really working hard to make to get us connected. Well, I, th I think that whole, I think that whole, um, th j just the, the, again, like what we were talking about with Michael, how the, the latency is the least interesting thing of, of what you could do and just the, the ability to connect uh, different artists, different areas of the, of the world, people that you'd want to collaborate with, but just practically speaking, it would, it'd be really hard to do in person. It's, it's really, there are a lot of upsides to, um, to this this kind of expression and this kind of connection yeah the synergy that you get with people i mean you know we put out the call and the first person to respond and submit a, a file was rufus reed i can't <laughs> tell you how good that made me feel and he played so beautifully and then we just had so we've had this intergenerational diverse uh um participation from you know people from all around the world and it's just it's very beautiful so no matter who you are, what you what style of music you play, how yep. old you are, where you live, it's it's open. You, yep. Yeah, it's beautiful. Cool. Well, I will I will link up to the Facebook page. Uh, I'll I'll provide uh, contact info so folks can get in touch with uh, Fumiko if she if if they're interested in uh, in getting more directly involved. They can write deep tones for peace live at gmail.com and okay. all communications can be done through that. And then check in with the page and and the the thing that's nice is that. All the archives of everything that's happened stays up there. Uh, anything else either of you want to say about the project? Uh, besides, obviously, go go check it out and get involved in whatever capacity you can. I, I, William? Yeah, yeah. You, you said it, Jason, not I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, just check it out. Uh, you know, the, all the transmissions are on in the archive, so you can watch from day one if you miss something and uh, you didn't catch somebody, it's, it's up there. So just uh, I, stay tuned. I think that I find it astounding the amount of new music of that people doing interesting things of folks I've not not been aware of at all it's just been you know wonderful meeting point to hear so many different approaches of beauty I just find that just really humanly affirming yeah. I just love that you know yeah. I mean it's just remarkable. A, you know, 
you know, uh, John Clayton played a beautiful thing. I mean, who, of course, I know, but then, you know, there's, uh, there, I mean, there's just been um, so many beautiful uh, transmissions. I can't even remember, but there have been like over 40, like 40, 40 different people who've played so far. In tw- you know, so that's, and, and I love that, that it's going to, you know, continue. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, William. Folks, check out links in the description for this episode or search on Facebook for Deep Tones for Peace. But we've got it all linked up. And that email, if you want to get involved, that's there as well. By the way, we've had Mark on the show before. Search in the archives for that two, three years ago, talking more about what he's up to. I've got another episode, actually, that we recorded the same day. That's what that reference to Michael, that's Michael Dessen, uh, makes sense if you were living that day. (laughs) might not make sense all by itself, but about... Uh, this cool piece of software called Jack Trip Telematic Music, which we've talked about with Mark in general. William, we've got to have you on the show for a proper episode one of these days. That will happen uh, soon, hopefully. Love what Mark does and has done over his career and what he's doing. I love what William is up to. It's fun to hear those two chatting about uh, back in the 70s. It's one of the joys of doing this show in the wacky position I'm in to hear from legends in the bass world, the jazz world. And I just feel so honored to be a part of this. And it really is inspiring to go and see, like Mark was describing, uh, John Clayton, Rufus Reed, and of course, my friend and past podcast guest Lloyd Goldstein did a session of Facebook has downsides, but one of the upsides is the ease of use and connecting people like this. So this is a great example of that. And yeah, it's super cool. Uh, do I have anything to tell you at the end here? I don't think so. I'm doing four episodes. I always sit down and record four intros and outros. So uh, there's a lot to talk about, but let's just leave it at that. And all I'm going to leave you with is just check that out. And yeah, I'm a fan of what they're doing. And it's so cool to see Kiowe Wellington. Also, other people that I've met and know that I've had on this show on playing solo bass performances, classical, jazz, improvised, extended techniques. It's all very good. Contrabass Conversations is produced by Michael Cooper, Steve Hinchy, Trevor Jones, Mitch Mooring, and Krista Copper. Mitch makes beautiful basses, does great work if you need work done in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, just east of Dallas-Fort Worth a bit. Learn more at mitchmooring.com. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum. 